let's have a look at um, sample size and how we make some decisions around that. So in terms of sample size, if we think about getting information, the more information we have, the better decisions that we can make. All right, the more knowledge we have, the better. So, but there's a compromise to be made. If I was to just take a very small sample size, okay, it's not going to take me very long to collect that data, which is a positive, okay. But I've only got a little bit of data, so in terms of my precision, it's not as good. If I take, however, a massive sample size, if I go and sample a thousand people, that's going to take me a very long time, which is a bit of a negative. But the other side of it is because I've got so much information, I'm going to be a lot more precise in what information I have. So we will often want to find some kind of compromise, somewhere where it's enough data, but it's not going to take too long to do. So we want good precision, but not um, something that's going to take too long to collect. Okay, so when I talk about um, sampling and sample size, I need to be clear what my sample size is depending on which method I use. So I can either use my simple random sampling method or the stratified sampling. That's the two that we'll use in NZ Grapher. So depending on which of these methods we use depends on how we're going to explain and describe it. So if I was going to start with simple random sampling, so it means I'm going to choose a simple a sample size for the whole data set because everyone has just been chosen at random, so I'm going to choose, out of my class of 30, I'm going to choose six people. All right, so all I need to say is that I've got a sample size of six and I have chosen those six people at random from my population. Okay, so for example... Um, if I'm investigating the difference in travel time for students between catching the bus and walking, I'm just going to take a simple random sample of 100 students. Now, that would all be all I need for my achieved. For my merit, I would need to go on and describe that um, process. So I would need to describe what a simple random sample is and how I would go and do it. The other type is if I've got a stratified. Now remember with a stratified, we start with the overall population. Okay, so we start with that overall population, but then I separate and split that population up. So for example, I might split it into the females on one side and the males on the other. And then I take a sample within the females. All right, so I've taken my sample within that. Similarly with the males, I then go and take a simple random sample of the males. So when I come to report my sample size, I need to say how many samples, I've, how, what the size sample is for the females and what it is for the males because they may not be the same. So in this case, I would say I've got a sample size of four females and four ma males and then I can give a description on how I would go about doing that. So that's when I've separated the males and the females and then I've taken four a random sample of four males and four females chosen from each of those two groups. Another way, here's another example of looking at it. So if I'm looking at the difference in travel time, then I would take a stratified random sample and then I need to have two sample sizes. So I'm going to take a sample size of 100 students who catch the bus and 100 students who walk. Okay, so I'm saying then I'm going to separate all of my high school students separate them into those who catch the bus and those who walk and I'm going to take a sample size of a hundred of those that catch the bus and a hundred of those that walk and that would be my description.